Hey guys, this is Odron Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by Dragoner Selling Gods. Dragoner is an amazing high fantasy RPG game that I've been playing for almost a year now, and I'm quite I'm quite in love with this game. I really I really like the the way that they made this game. They have an ama they have amazing graphics. Uh, they have cool boss mechanics. They have lots of heroes. They have you know lots of interesting interesting things that make it uh, worth starting and playing because that's why I've been playing for so long. But if you want to start playing this, uh, if you want to start playing Dragoner today, or if you just want to support the channel, there's going to be a link in the description and the pinned comment of this video that you can click and you can download the game today. It's available on iOS devices, Android devices, it's even on Mac and it's obviously on PC, it's on the Epic Game Store, it's on Steam, it's basically everywhere. So the, the slogan of, of this uh, season 3 is Dive Deep Battle Peak. It's basically going to continue a little bit the story from last season where we went into the under you know underwater area, we had the bottom of the misty sea, so it's kind of con going to continue a little bit on that on that front and you know they're they're planning to do a ton of cool stuff this season because they're gonna have their half anniversary so expect to see a ton of amazing things that are gonna come to the game i'm really looking forward to them as uh as part of those amazing things what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be doing the third part in the in the next three months of the dungeons and dragons collaboration so if you if you didn't already know well they did already two collaborations first one was when they brought dritz the urden to join the you know dungeons and from dungeons and dragons to join the dragon air world so he was the first one that they introduced which obviously i got the second one that joined the dragon Air universe was elmister omar again another legend from the from the lore of dungeons and dragons so the third one's gonna be who who knows who knows and i guess as part of that we have this picture that kind of you know it's a sneak peek saying who will be the next collaboration character so if you're somebody that's into the uh, dungeons and dragons lore and universe leave it in the comments below who do you think the third hero that will join dragoner will be because i'm really curious to see what you guys uh, say so what i want to cover in today's video is actually the new gear sets because as part of the season three you know we had lots of new heroes added we had new artifacts which are already covered in a in a video and now i just want to look at the new gear but one of the amazing things that they actually added was a new type of gear okay we already had rare epic you know legendary gear but now they added mythic gear as you can see over here so that's gonna be really cool to dive into and see so first of all let's just have a look at uh, the legendary gear uh, from each dungeon. So this one might be a little bit of a longer video, but I want to have a look at what they do and, you know, maybe give some uh, suggestions if, if I can think of like, okay, who you should use these on. So first one, we have Emperor's Might. This was the same from last season, gives you attack and skill haste. And basically the more attack you have and the lower your enemy has, the more damage you're going to do. This was really helpful last season against the Mecha Torque when you were attacking those magic crystals. If you landed the attack penalty as well, you're doing a ton more damage. So this one's a pretty nice one. I like to see the skill haste always in there. Now, the next one, this one's Rhapsodist's Calling Set. Okay, this is one of the new ones. So it gives you attack and attack speed. Okay, that's good. The Wearer Basic Attack ignores 20% of the target's defense. So this one, from my point of view, is more aimed, it kind of looks to me like it's more aimed towards Dauntless people because Dauntless people, 99% of them, do basic attacks even if it's their battle skill or if it's their ultimate skill they still count as basic attacks so this one's definitely going to be powerful for the dauntless people you know maybe the dauntless uh heroes are going to come back into the fray this season more uh more than last season okay next one unclean bloodline attack percent and enlightenment okay increases derivative damage dealt by the wearer by 20 percent this one sounds really powerful, honestly. It sounds really powerful because if uh, if I think about it, the artifacts give you, like Violin gives you 35% extra derivative damage, the Harpy's Nail gives you like 25 or 30, so getting another 20 on top of derivative damage definitely can make derivative damage be really powerful this season. I'm really looking forward to testing this as well. This is going to be interesting. So this one's good for like Enlightenment, oh, sorry, for uh, Dauntless, for Poison Heroes, good for Burn Heroes. So anybody that does basically damage over time, they usually scale with derivative damage. So that's really cool. And then let's see the uh, last one, Aerial Battle Roar, Attack Percent and Crit Rate. Yep, this one's the, you know, the one when you, when you want to do raw damage, this is the powerful one. The Wearer gains an additional four attack for every one crit damage they have. Okay, this one's insane. This one sounds insane because this one kind of makes you go full on crit damage and crit rate. You're just going to try to get 100% crit rate. Then you'd basically just ignore attack and just give, your, give yourself as much crit damage as you can. 
and that's gonna be converted into attack. So this is, uh, I really like it. This this one's really awesome this season. I'm looking forward to testing this one out. And now let's have a look at the <coughs> main events. Mythic artifact. The reason why they're so powerful is because of this. They're one piece, okay? They're a one piece effect, which basically allows us to complete the other sets because we have two piece, three piece, piece uh, effects, and that was it. Now we have another one that can be a completing one. So let's see. First one, magic crystal refinement. The wearer uh, obtains 15 attack additionally for every one skill haste they have. For every one skill haste they possess. Okay, this one... I guess this one doesn't sound as powerful for a straight up DPS. Maybe if you have somebody that's more of a support type hero, like I don't know, Yola, a cigarette, stuff like that, where you're gonna give them some attack, give them some uh skill haste to go as often as possible. I guess this is more towards like support to do a bit more DPS. That's why I see it. Because otherwise, you know, skill haste, you will not give too much skill haste on your DPS in general. So this is not the most powerful, but still, it's a one piece effect, it can be amazing. The next one, death record. When any hero dies in the Grand Gladiator arena, okay, so this is just arena, I don't like it. <laughs> the wearer can obtain 15% of their attack. The upper limit of the, uh, additional attack obtained is 300% of the wearer's attack. Okay, so this one's more aimed towards arena. So uh, I'm not sure that much, you know, that much of a fan for this. I'm not sure I'm a fan, but still, it can be interesting. However, when you have stuff that relies on other people dying, uh, unless you have a reviver, it's not as powerful. Maybe if you have a team where, you know, you have a reviver and then your wearer gains this one, it can be quirky, but I'm not a big fan of this. Again, might have to test it, it might just be extremely powerful. Okay, ne next one, Chaos Symbiosis. The wearer receives 35% bonus effects on upcoming ultimate up and deals 35% more damage at the cost of recharging speed being decreased by 50%. Hmm, receives 35% bonus effects uh, on upcoming ultimate up and deals 35% more damage at the cost of recharging uh, being decreased by 50%. So this one sounds really quirky and really interesting when you have maybe a team with uh, somebody like a Megan or somebody like a Jorn. Like what Megan does is on her battle skill she heals the ally with the lowest HP and gives them 25% ultimate energy. So if you have this piece of gear on that person, they basically gain a lot more ultimate energy and then they're going to do a lot more damage. So this one can definitely be real, uh, really powerful paired in a team where, where you have ultimate energy boost. Because if you're gonna have that ultimate energy boost, you're not gonna care that much about about the recharging speed because you're gonna boost your ultimate energy yourself. This one's quirky. I like it. I like it. So far, this one's my favorite one. You know, even though it's not as powerful. Hopefully, the last one's gonna be the best because all of these ones just seem quirky but not straight up good for PV. Like this is what I'm gonna use. So let's see the last one. <clears throat> the wearer deals 35% increased damage to enemies with defense penalty. Now this one's good, okay? Because most of the fights, 99, 100% of the fights, what you're gonna do, you know, you're gonna fight PVE stuff, even in arena actually, you're gonna have defense penalty on, either it being the crown of the unclean or being witch's remain. So this one's amazing. 35% extra damage is gonna be huge. That's, that's a ton. I love this one. So I have a feeling 99% of the people will have this, okay? Apart from maybe the supports having this one, where you get a bit more attack and whatnot, 99% of people will have this, okay? So, yeah, definitely love the strike, the unprepared. That, that's gonna be the one. So, those are the gear sets from Grave of Venom. Now, let's jump over, I guess, to the Grave of Curse, okay? So, let's see the Grave of Curse. What do we have? Again, let's go to stage 9, so we still have Ancestral Protection, HP Resist, you know, you take, uh, everybody else takes less damage, you take it instead, we know it from Season 2. Then this one, Tundra Tenacity, Skill Haste and HP, okay, it reduces damage taken by the wearer by 25% when that damage does not crit. So it reduces damage taken by the wearer by 25% when that damage does not crit. So this one sounds to me like it's straight up a good set for PvE because in arena most of the time people are gonna crit you. So in PvE, unless I'm mistaken, I've never seen people being crit. So this one, that, that's what this sounds like. If, if it's not, if we get crit, it's not as uh, powerful from my point of view. Still, HP skill has good stats. Now let's have a look at the mythic ones. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, so this one's impregnable. Okay, this one's funny. So it's called impregnable. So if somebody wears impregnable, 
but then gets hit by a knockup skill, what's gonna happen? <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, I just had to. I remember reading this in the past, and I had to say that joke because you know it's just it's just too funny to me. <laughs> Okay, one piece effect. When the wearer gains a buff, there is a 50% chance for the buff to be undispellable. I guess this one sounds like more of an arena, an arena skill, because I can't think of any other areas, or at least, you know, maybe there's going to be the end game boss that removes buffs. But this one, I guess, yeah, mostly arena sounds like an arena piece, so it, it's okay, you know, it's a one piece effect, it, it's going to be fine. Okay, next one, Mona Lisa's Blessing. This one was different. Mona Lisa's Blessing was a three-piece set, was healing us last season, uh, season two. So let's see what does it do now. There is a 50% chance for the wearer to grant 50% increased healing and shield effect. Okay, that's that's a lot. 50% chance the wearer grants 15% increased healing and shield effects. I'm just thinking about like Garia, straight up. If Garius procs this one. You're gonna be, be, gonna have insane shields for uh, whatever you're gonna fight. So I love this one. I feel like most people will have this one, honestly. Like this one's like, yeah, quirking can protect. It's more arena based. But 99% of people that you want them, you know, they do healing, they do shields, maybe our tanks, they do a little bit of that. You're 100% gonna want them to have the this one as the last P set. I like it. I like it. This is really powerful. Okay, it's, it looks cool. So far, everything looks cool. And I guess the last dungeon, let's have a look over here. Oh yeah, I can just I don't need to go there, I can just straight have a look. So first one again, Mona Mona why is it another one that's Mona Lisa's blessing? Didn't wasn't the other one called Mona? <laughs> Let me see. I'm, I'm I might just be wrong, might just be confused, but isn't that one called Yeah, there's another Mona Lisa's blessing. Yeah, I think they should change it because otherwise it's it's too confusing having the two you know two sets doing the same thing anyway. Mona Lisa's Blessing, uh, yep, same as last last season, skill haste and accuracy, and then three piece, basically you heal based off of your max HP. So whoever wears this three piece set, I'm gonna give them as much HP as possible so they do bigger heals whenever they do their ultimates. <clears throat> then the other one is Puppeteer's Inspiration, I like the name, sounds really cool, skill haste and accuracy. Isn't that the same thing? They both have skill haste and accuracy, okay. So, uh, skill has an accuracy. Allies around the wearer gain a defense up equal to 50% of the wearer's defense. And the first time these allies' HP drop below 50%, they receive 20% target max HP healing. Okay, this one sounds crazy. 15% of the targets of the wearer's defense, if this acts as a, uh, you know, Total defense once in battle. I'm just thinking somebody like an Ardress or somebody like a Garius that has a ton of defense. Giving this to everybody else can be huge. Like whatever, especially Vortex. However, I don't understand this. Why is this put on a set that gives you accuracy and skill haste? Like most people that are gonna be, you know, have a lot of defense are not gonna have a ton of like, you know, not gonna need accuracy. Most tanks don't necessarily do debuffs. Like yeah, I can see maybe somebody like a Ripper cast. Or I guess maybe somebody like a Horus that you could use, but most of the time, you know, you want to try and get tanks that mostly have defense and do quirky stuff like that. But might be good, you know, might be wrong. I like it though. I like it. This one sounds pretty cool. <clears throat> and now, okay, there's four of them. Interesting. So we have four of the four mythic ones when it comes to the Grave of Rot. So I guess this season we're going to have to try and farm Grave of Rot, which is usually one of the hardest. So let's see what these ones are. Okay, first one, Iron Bastion. The wearer is immune to a coming stun, but each second of that stun's duration reduces the wearer's ultimate energy by 6%. So basically, you're straight up immune to stun, but then you lose ultimate energy whenever you, you get stunned based on that stuns. Usually stuns are like 3, 4, or 5 seconds. I don't think there's more than 5. So the most, the most you will lose is like 30% ultimate energy. But blocking a stun is really powerful, so I feel like this one's gonna be amazing, especially in arena. You know, when you have that, uh, you have people that have Tamars just straight up come and try and st stun you. If you have this one piece set on your people for arena, this is gonna be definitely amazing. There, like 100%, I believe most people in arena will have this as as one of their sets or especially supports. Okay, this one's really awesome. Okay, next one. The wearer has an additional 50% chance of dispelling one buff from the target when inflicting debuffs. Okay, so again, this one feels to me like mostly arena, but then at the same time, I guess it could be good for places like the Grave of Curse, 
uh, yep, the grave of uh, sorry, ancient battlefield. You know where where they gain buffs. This one could be good on someone that has lots of debuffs. This is fish in troubled waters. I like the name. It's really funny. Definitely, if you like this, is going to be interesting on your debuffers, hundred percent, because they have to inflict a debuff in order to dispel a buff. <clears throat> okay, the next one is going to be Echoes of the Ancestor Spirit. One piece effect. The wearer dispels one debuff from themselves when they cast their ultimate skill. Okay, this sounds interesting. It's it's not the most powerful, not the best, but guess it can it can be good. Again, it's a one piece effect. You cast your ultimate, you you dispel a debuff like you know an attack penalty, defense penalty, burn poisons, whatever. So that could be good. And then the last one, let's see. One piece effect again. Mark of austerity. Twenty percent of the damage dealt by the wearer will be converted to healing when their HP is below. 50% AoE damage can only trigger 30% of this effect. So this one's basically a life steal. Like, you know, you just straight up life steal and uh, I like it. It's it's amazing. This one I feel like could be really useful in uh, most areas where you need a bit more survivability. Like if, if you're if you're getting too close to dying, you need some survivability or I'm thinking somebody like, you know, sniper DPS, sniper DPS heroes in arena, such as again, the quest as the Kamaris, because they're going to get some hits, then, you know, they might be killed pretty fast, but you have this on them. Well, once they drop under 50%, they're going to start healing every time they do damage. So I like this one. I like the mark of austerity. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, they, they definitely look like some interesting uh, gear sets that they added. I'm, I'm really happy about this. I guess nothing for the runes, because I guess... What can you do with Mythic Runes for now? That's uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Did I miss anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's that's about it about the gear sets. But they definitely look awesome. They definitely look awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to testing them again. The, especially the, the Mythic ones. I feel like they're going to be game changing. You know, not all of them. But some of them look really amazing. And they're going to change the way that Arena works. They're going to change the way Vortex works. I think we're going to see some, some crazy things happening this season. But... This is going to be for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Dragonair Silent Gods, for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in starting to play Dragonair Silent Gods, or if you just want to support this channel, there's going to be a link in the description and the pinned comment of this video that you can click and you can download Dragonair today. It's available on iOS devices, Android devices. It's even on Mac. It's on PC, obviously. It's on the Epic Game Store. It's on Steam. So, you know, it's basically everywhere. So what are you waiting for? Dive deep, Battle Peak, join me in Dragonair. So... We can have this fun and continue this journey because I'm loving this game and I'm hoping it keeps getting better and better. But anyway, this is going to be for today, guys. Thank you all for watching. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and I'm going to see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>